In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this truncated icosahedron. This is made of mostly walnut with uh, maple pentagons. 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons make this shape. And uh, But before I go through all that, I'm going to show you some of the others that I've designed and made. This is one, uh, one of my earlier ones. It's uh, Walnut and maple, 24 sides. And I've got this dodecahedron. It's not the uh, same scale. You know, it's got a non uniform scale, so it's squashed upon the two fold axis. This one's a box, it has a lid. It's pretty precise fitting, uh, lid goes on both ways. I sanded it like this so that fits a little better that way. And this wood is sycamore. Quarter sawn sycamore is you know one of my favorite woods to work with. It's really pretty. <laughs> okay. Here's another one. I made this one out of cherry. It's 16 sides and it's got a lid. It was intended to be some kind of jewelry box or something, some sort of box. But I've got more information about all these on my website, spiralsbesteve.com, where you can go and uh, get lots of information about them, everything you need to construct the truncated icosahedron. I got one more here. This was my favorite. This is 120 pieces, two different face shapes. You know, these pentagons and this, these are hexagons actually. It's cherry and maple. So, the rest of this video is going to be making this one. So, I hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'd sure appreciate that. And we'll take it from there. What you're seeing here in the lower left part of your screen is the view through the microscope. The microscope is capable of recording video, but while it's recording, it does not display the crosshairs. So, on the microscope itself, I put a piece of tape on the screen with a, a mark on it to act as the, the marker, and I had to superimpose it onto the video you see here. It's just a, a plus sign. Moving the sled back and forth, the pattern line is to the right of the mark on the leading edge and to the left of the mark on the trailing edge. And I'll make an adjustment by loosening the screw for the trailing edge and then tightening the screw for the leading edge enough to put it back on line. After this adjustment is made, I will check it again, and it needs more adjustments still. 
the trailing edge is too far to the left. So again we will loosen the trailing edge screw and tighten the leading edge screw. This gets the pattern line just almost parallel to the fence. Loosen the trailing edge and then tighten the leading edge again. Now the pattern line is parallel not only to the fence but also the saw blade path. After the cut is made, we can look at the cut and see little bits of ink or toner where the saw blade cut right down along the line. Okay, I got five hexagons cut, so I'm going to do a quick little test fit. Tape them together and see how the see how it makes a ring. I'm going to tear that in two, a little too wide. This is going to be a very small icosahedron. Should be somewhere around three inches diameter. Drum roll. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Stay on there. And there it is. So that's five out of twenty. So I got 15 more to cut, and then the pentagons.
So the glue should be set now, and uh, I'm just going to unwrap it to I think it'll dry faster if it's exposed to air. So we'll take this rubber band clamp and the plastic off, and let it dry more. Glue on the stretch wrap is still wet. So we've had a chance to dry. That turned out nice. But we'll let it let all this glue dry and and then uh, we'll put it on the lathe and see what it turns out to be. It looks like you know, at this point it looks like it Went together pretty well. I cleaned this up a little bit, thinking that I was gonna glue some faces on it before, you know, so the lathe centers could have some to poke into. I didn't want to poke into these, but uh, after I started cleaning it up, I I'm not sure I'm gonna put it on a lathe. I may just clean it up and leave it you know, with flat sides, so uh, just as an afterthought because I, you know, saw this grinder on my bench, I thought I wonder if that will work good for taking that label paper off, and, and it actually works really good, so I'm going to finish cleaning it up, and uh, I'll let you watch. <laughs> This wire wheel that I used, um, as wire wheels go, this is actually one of the softer ones. It's a uh, brass plated steel. Uh, a magnet would ouch. A magnet would stick to that. And this grinder, it's a low speed grinder. It's uh, 1725 RPMs instead of 3750 or 3500 or whatever. But uh, that worked really well for cleaning this up. And you definitely want to use you know, eye protection while doing that. And I did. <laughs> 